since it's our last season, this is a story that has been on our books since literally we started collecting myths. We've just never tackled it because it always seemed like it was too big for us to tackle. Go on. All right, there's a guy. He's tasked with cleaning out one of those tanker cars on a train that holds liquid, and he's using a steam cleaner. So he's steam cleaning the whole thing, and of course, as he's doing that, he's warming it up, and it starts to rain. So he caps off the tanker car and walks away. The cooling rain causes the steam to contract, and as the myth goes, the train car crushes itself. From a vacuum. Exactly. But first, some shop-sized science. An imploding tanker car. How could this happen? Tanker cars are giant. How could something like that spontaneously implode and crush itself? Well, if it did in fact happen, it had to do with pressure and pressure differential. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you with this metal can. Now I'm about to perform a critical action in this experiment, and that is to take a little bit of the hot water and pour it into the can. Because in the original myth, the tanker car had been steam cleaned inside and out. Now, I'm about to initiate an implosion. First thing I do is cap the can. Now, fully capped, this vessel was full of steam and air that was heated to its boiling point. Now, that air is rapidly cooling. As it's cooling, they're creating a negative pressure inside the can. And that's bad news for the can. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, it's actively moving, look at that. <laughs> the scientific principle is clearly sound. Now, it's just a question of scale. Welcome to Oregon, the end of the line for the tall tale of the imploding tank car. This is gonna be cool. So this myth starts with a lonely train car that's just delivered its payload, and it's sitting here on the tracks waiting to be cleaned. The cleaning comes in the form of steam. Go ahead and open up the valve and start putting steam in the tank. Valve opening. Piping hot at over 300 degrees, its goal is to remove every last trace of residue from the previous cargo. Oh, we've been heating our tank car now for about three hours. Any minute now, we're gonna call it, I'm gonna suit up, I'll cap it, get the heck out of its way, and hopefully we'll watch it crush itself. Here we go. He has to be fast and careful while he creates a 60-ton pressure vessel. Okay, we're sealed up here, I'm climbing down. I'm closing the valve now. The valve is closed. I am de-assing the area. Mission accomplished. It's cap, and the countdown to catastrophe begins. That went smoothly. Yep, when things cool down, everything is right on track for the mythical implosion. All right, fire department, let's make it rain. The team finally has all the many parts of this mythical freight train mishap in place. Five inches of mercury. Six. The rain cools the steel. The steam inside begins to condense, and the negative pressure rises. It's ramping up, just like the suspense. Come on, baby. 19 and a half. And the tension. 21. Wow. 15 minutes after sealing in the steam, the negative internal pressure is almost as low as it can possibly go. And for the first time, the guys think the tank car might not collapse. OK, folks, we're going to wait for it to be an even hour. And if we haven't seen any movement on the needle by then, we'll call it. The pressure leveled off at 27 and hasn't budged, and neither has the tank car. So when they hit the hour, here we go. They reluctantly concede defeat. Pull the plug and let the air back in. <laughs> hey, nice work on the rig. Everything we did worked beautifully. But you wouldn't break. It's not our fault. 